Mm-hmm. What other conference can give you the most money, gives you the academic prowess, and gives you the athletic prowess as well? That's seen nationally, and that's to me, that's the Big Ten. Big Ten, yeah. It's the Big t- It's the Big Ten. Geographically, it makes sense. What at this point, it doesn't matter geographically with how we're moving, but the Big Ten still has the highest revenue earning. Their mm-hmm. deal is up for restructuring, I think, in like another year. So they're getting ready to start restructuring. And now this is where I think Notre Dame makes his pivot. The Big Ten was already talking about a billion dollars in revenue mm-hmm. before USC and UCLA. Now right. with USC and UCLA, they're, they're, they're approximating 1.3, 1.2, excuse me, let me know, mm. 1.2 billion minimal. This is minimal revenue. Mm. So if I'm Notre Dame, the Big Ten fits, especially because where we're going with conference realignment, which I think that's what they need to do. It makes sense. It's been something they've, which I didn't know historically, Notre Dame tried to in the 40s to join the Mm. Big Ten. The Big Ten, it's so stupid. It's why this didn't work. It was Notre Dame and like Illinois or Northwestern, somebody. Notre Dame just didn't send their representative to the meeting. The Big Ten got offended and said, fine, we don't want you. So this could have been ended a long time ago, right? So much to do in the fourth. Simpler times. Yeah, simpler times. There wasn't million-dollar revenue deals. It was just like, <laughs> hey, you know, this is for academics and scholar-athletes. Yes. So I think, I think if I'm Notre Dame, just go to the Big Ten. I think there's some way, you know, you can rope NBC into that. Maybe NBC and Fox join together and figure out a way. Because NBC is not going to want to lose their money. We know that for a fact. So I think that's what it's going to come down to is what's going to happen with their NBC deal. Can NBC get in on some of this revenue money or what's their buyout? Because this is Mm. a big deal for them with Notre Dame football. Um, But I think if Notre Dame has to make a choice, man, the Big Ten to me makes the most sense. Now, it wouldn't shock me if they picked the SEC. But I think the Big Ten fits their brand more than the SEC does. No doubt. And not that this even matters anymore, but it also geographically makes more sense. Right. But geographically means nothing now in college football, so whatever. You also put them in there with a couple of rivals. Yep. USC and Michigan, and I think Mm -hmm. Michigan State even. Michigan State kind of. Kind of, sort of. Um So here's what I wonder. If they go Big Ten, that certainly would solidify teams like Miami, Clemson, FSU, and maybe even like a Virginia Tech trying to get in the SEC. They're trying to get in somewhere. They're trying to get in somewhere. Because I felt like when this initially happened, Because, you know, when this first was reported with USC, UCLA, head of the Big Ten, it was quickly followed up with Washington and Oregon Oregon are are following. Yep. So then initially the knee jerk is, okay, well, then that means the SEC is going to go after the Florida schools plus Mm -hmm. a couple others like Clemson and Virginia Tech. And you're just going to have two super conferences that if that happens, here's how I've resolved in my mind as a fan. Is it going to destroy college football? Probably. But... To maintain fan interest at this point, just run it like the NFL playoffs, right? Where you've got two super conferences, you get the top six from each super conference, have a wild card weekend, have a divisional Mm -hmm. round, have a championship round, then have your national championship game with the winner essentially of the SEC versus the Big Ten, which if all of this shapes out that way, that would be the two best teams in all of college football anyways. So that's one option. Mm -hmm. But if Notre Dame were to join the ACC, and I know it's all going to come back to money, but does that allow the ACC to keep those Florida schools, especially Hmm. if Miami is getting ready to be on the up and up? Then you've already got Clemson, who they had a down year, but they'll be back. They'll be back. If Florida State can get their stuff together, which they've had some uh, a pretty big commit, I think, on Tuesday. But if Florida State can get it together and then sort of ride that four-headed monster of Miami, Florida State, Clemson, Notre Dame to maintain 
hmm. this elite status, kind of keep things balanced. And then maybe just maybe the Big 12 can patchwork a conference over here to to at least just stay try relevant. to stay relevant. Right. That's where I feel like all eyes are on Notre Dame because when <laughs> I initially thought Miami Clemson FSU, okay, they're they're out, they're done. Wait, 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 hold on. Pump the brakes. Maybe not not so fast, my friend, as Lee Corso would say. Maybe everyone's waiting to see what Notre Dame does. And then to me, the That's a good perspective. The wild card is Big Twelve. How big of a check do they have to write to get a team like Notre Dame to come in and be the flagship school <coughs> of the conference? That ain't going to happen. No. So what's the only other option that could potentially legitimately play out for Notre Dame? They stay independent. Now, I like the ACC option because they would be the big dogs on the block, which dollars talk, but so does power. Uh, yeah. So does power. Um, I I could see that. I could see them going, ah, we're going to go to ACC, stay with Clemson, Florida State, Miami, and that gives you four quote unquote blue blood programs, i.e. Clemson not really being one, but now being a juggernaut that they are. A, a, a um, new a new new money. A uh, new money, blood. yeah, a new money blue blood. <laughs> and being like, Hey, we with if Florida State and Miami return, that four can go against any other conference's top four. Like I can take that four and I'm not saying they're gonna beat them, but I'll take that four and they can play Bama, Georgia, LSU and whoever your fourth best team's gonna be. They can play Michigan, Ohio State, UCLA, I mean USC and U- Penn State or whoever your fourth will be at like. Cause that's well, what's gonna happen when these conferences. There's always a top four. Right. Well and oh. and, and like we've talked about in the past, hmm. the reason why if those particularly hmm. Florida State and Miami, if they come back, the reason why they'll be able to compete with Bama's and Georgia's is because they're going to have the talent. That, that's right. Yeah. They're going to they're going to have that means they will have kept the talent in state hmm. that's going to Bama and Georgia. That's a good perspective. So, okay, so we've so so that's a scenario. I like Notre that. Notre Dame goes to the ACC. I actually you, like that. Well, then yeah, so then the SEC you still have Bama, uh Georgia, Texas OU coming in. Right. Right. I'm just I'm just using them because they're blue bloods. I don't right. actually think they're gonna be who they once uh, were. Uh huh. Who they think they're gonna be in the yeah. SEC? <laughs> yeah. But for name recognition, brand mm-hmm. recognition, money, mm-hmm. dollars, all that, you've got them. ACC would be Miami, Florida State, Notre Dame, Clemson, Big Ten. You've got Michigan, Ohio State, USC, and you got um, Penn State there. Penn State. I mean, you can you can. You can piecemeal whoever your fourth best team is going to be. 